How's it going everybody? I'm Drifty from Driftwood Gaming and in this quick tutorial I'm going to teach you how to uh, take some character sheets and turn them into a, a plethora of other character sheets that you can use. So this isn't like how to sprite or anything, you know, this isn't a spriting tutorial, but what this is, is a way for you to use uh, Photoshop or GIMP uh, in order to make more uh, character sheets if you already have some character sheets like the default ones or maybe you've made some of your own and uh, there's there's ways that you can go about uh, duplicating these uh, but making them look different so you can kind of reskin your enemies uh, many many uh, RPGs do this um, especially like Final Fantasy series you'll notice at the beginning of uh, the game you may encounter like uh, a certain sprite of an enemy and then halfway through the game you'll see that same sprite but it'll be a different color so they do the same technique to save uh, to save time and, and you're basically just filtering or editing pre-existing uh, art and that's what we're going to be doing here so um, to start off what we're going to do is load GIMP or Photoshop what I'm using and you're going to find your characters inside your IMG folder so you open up your game you go to uh, game open folder and then IMG and then inside the character sheet or inside the character folder uh, and you're gonna see all your character sheets here so I've got the uh, enemies one or the the monster PNG loaded already so once you've got the the PNG loaded you may notice that there's a transparent background and that's what you need to have in order for it to not look like a box moving around so if you try to put a filter or apply something over this transparent background, you're going to notice that you're not going to have uh, the option to do that. So what you want to do is um, find the size, the file size, um, or just create a new uh, a blank file. So we see that uh, the dimensions here for this one is 576 by 384. So what we're going to do is create a new uh, 576 by 384 and then if if you're using Photoshop you can use control on the plus key to zoom in uh, and the minus key to zoom out what we're going to be using is this highlight tool so um, what I've done here is I've left clicked the top and I've dragged all the way to the bottom and I've highlighted everything there so I'm pressing control C and that's gonna let me copy everything there so then when I go over to the next sheet I can highlight it and press control V and now it's going to copy it's going to paste that right in there but the difference here is we have a background layer so this background layer is going to let us apply a filter so what we're going to do now is uh, manipulate this sheet so that it looks different from the original so there's many ways to do it um, you could um, go in and manually change it you can uh, but the quickest and easiest way is to apply a filter so that's what we're going to do quickly just to show you <clears throat> one easy method of, of changing your sprite sheets so that they look similar but they look a little different so you can rescan your enemies that way so let's uh, look around and find something that doesn't totally destroy all detail and so that it still looks like an enemy not a blob that kind of looks interesting right there texturizing Let's do something uh, really simple on it. Let's just do poster edge so it's going to look a little darker. We'll take that one first. Now what we're going to do is just kind of mess around with it and apply some adjustments on it until it looks uh, sort of different. So we posterize it. And what you do here is completely up to, you know, your own interpretation of what you're trying to do. We can change the color settings. Uh, we don't want to do that actually. We just want to apply some things to it. Let's put some blending options on it. Uh, one thing to note though is uh, these follow a, a, like in a box. 
So something like this stroke wouldn't work very well because it's going to bleed outside of its like display box. So what's going to happen is the enemy is going to walk across the screen, but you're going to see like little floating dots above and, and below it. So you kind of want to only change it to the point where it stays in the same uh, location. Alright, we've got a little... They sort of look a little bit different. And you can continue to do stuff like this until it uh, until they look a little a little bit more different. A filter that uh, goes uh, pretty well is uh, let me find it is the stylize because it makes it look a lot different and it you can still kind of see some of the detail. Um, but what I'm gonna do here, Yeah, we'll keep all that. So now we've reskinned these enemies, and they look uh, kind of psychedelic. They look a little different. Uh, this this wasn't like the best uh, choice of filters, but it's uh, an example. You know, to save time, we're gonna take this here, and what we're gonna do now is we're gonna save it, but we're not gonna overwrite the original file. We definitely don't want to overwrite because we want to keep that original file, and we want to make different copies of the same thing. So we're going to save it as instead of save at, uh, instead of saving it. And we're going to go to that same location that we were in, the IMG characters. And we're going to save it as a .png file. It's, it has to be a PNG file. Now you can save it as a Photoshop file as well. And we'll call this um, monsters and then an underscore and then give it like whatever you want, something else. So we'll say... Um, psychedelic. Now I'm pretty sure that's not how you spell it, but it doesn't matter. And we're gonna, not going to give it any interlace or anything, and we're going to give it um, smallest or none on the compression. It really doesn't matter too much. But we've got that. So if we were to load uh, MV, Um, we can kind of put this, uh, you know, it's saved in the same folder, so we can apply this, like if we wanted to create a new event, we see Monster Psychedelic here. And when you do something like this, you'll have to like test it in game and let it uh, run around so that, um, so that you don't have little dots above and below it, you want to kind of check it. So what we're going to do is we're going to give it a random uh, movement. And we're just going to make it move super fast, just so we can look at it. And then um, go ahead and start the player. Oh, we need to do one more thing. That's why we wanted to test it. Okay, so we still have our background layer, right? So we have to get rid of this background layer, otherwise it's going to look like a white box. So in order to do that, you basically just click on the background here. And you want to take on uh, left-click the little lock and drag it down to this trash can. And then that's going to let us get rid of it. So we can right click that and um, remove layer or we can just drag the layer to the trash can. And that completely gets rid of the background layer. Um, if you're in GIMP or something, try to right click and remove layer or delete layer. Um, you know, I'm not exactly sure how to do it in GIMP, but it should be a very similar process to the way I did it in uh, Photoshop here. So we'll just file uh, and save this image as PNG monsters underscore psychedelic and I'm gonna overwrite it because the last one it's just gonna look like a white box behind it but now we have this transparent box we go back into the game and we reload this Yeah, we're going to discard. Actually, let's delete that. Maybe we need to uh, save and then redo the event. Did I save that as a PNG file?
Yes. Yeah, I want to replace that. Okay. Sometimes, if you have that issue, a workaround is to close the project and reopen the project, and it'll load all those assets again. There we go. Now we have a transparent background. So let's load this transparent slime. <clears throat> let's give him a random movement. Let's up his speed and his frequency to max. And then we're just going to watch him run around and make sure that the, the graphic looks uh, coherent and it doesn't uh, bleed you know, with little dots and pixels above and beyond uh, its boundaries. We're just going to select whatever for now. So there we go. Might have been a little too fast to look at him, but you can see it looks pretty pretty smooth. Let's slow it down real quick. Let's uh let's drop it down to that and and that so we can get a better look at him. Matter of fact, let's cut this event. Let's go to a different map and just paste it right here. Just on this test map, so can get a better look at it with no lighting effects. But there we go. We've got this strange looking transparent orb blob that came from our default sprite. And now we've reskinned that enemy. So you can use this technique for all the uh, all the sprites you get. If you use other artists work, just make sure that you give them credit for it even if you resprite it. You didn't really create it, you only edited or modified a version of their art. So even if you take somebody else's stuff and you reskin it, make sure you give the original uh, person's uh, credit for that work too. Because even though you put work on it, they kind of created it. So that's going to do it for this quick tutorial. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoy these sort of, uh, I don't know, art tutorials, I'm not the greatest artist, but um, it's simple things that you guys can do use. If you enjoy that, give this video a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. That'd be awesome. Uh, and check out driftwoodgaming.com if you want to network with some people and work on some games together. Thank you guys so much for watching this. We'll see you in the next video.